Joining us right now on a show, I'm look, really looking forward to doing the show and sharing it with you, is an Academy Award winning actress joining us right now, Lee Grant. She won an Academy Award for Shampoo. She won an Obie for her performance in The Maids. She won an Emmy for a show. Remember Peyton Place back in the 50s? Lee Grant won an Emmy for that. She's with us right now. Let's have a nice welcome for a beautiful woman of the theater and of films and of television. Here is Lee Grant. Nice to have you, Lee. You're crossing wires. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Have a seat. Yeah. Have a coffee. Oh, you got one of the good cups. It's not cracked or anything. No, it's one of it our midday. It stays in, and it's midday. got. I think is that my lipstick or somebody else's? I know it's not mine. Because it's don't kind fool of it's, around it's, a, it's a nice and New York touch, you know, to it get really a glass is. with somebody else's lipstick on it. Good to have you with us. Good to be here. Um, you know, I was wondering about Faye. Remember Faye, your TV series mm -hmm. Faye? A yes. lot of viewers may remember it. Yeah. Did the fact that that came on, and it seemed to be a funny series, but got canceled, did that now make you hate television and <laughs> TV executives and all those network programming people? You want to wring their necks? No more than I did before. <laughs> 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 no, it just reinforced uh, my opinion of certain kind of, you know, bureaucratic idiocy. But really? Tell us a little bit about it. Being a t TV employee myself, I'm always curious to hear about the idiocy involved. Oh, well, I don't, there's nothing to tell. It was so highly publicized at the time, but, but um, they had taken um, an adult show with uh, a new idea at the time, although it's, they're, they're doing it now, uh, which was that uh, a divorced woman can work and earn her living and be happy without kvetching about the fact that she doesn't have a husband. And uh, they put it between two um, absolutely new shows against the Waltons yeah. at the time, you know, when, when seven-year-olds are watching. And Your appeal is not to seven-year-olds. <laughs> I, I do not see Lee Grant as this, the heroine of the seven-year-old set. Well, I don't know who my appeal is to, but anyway. Well, anybody who likes good acting, I would think. Yeah. You're, a, you're a good actress. Thank you. Uh, uh, just a couple other things about you I think that people may not be aware of. Uh, you were blacklisted in the 50s. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that. What, what did you do to deserve well, that? Your usual, well, that's a kind you of know, chic thing decade. now to be blacklisted. I know. It's, it's amazing, uh, the interest in it. You know, it's, it's history and, uh, and it's uh, past history. And it's amazing how suddenly everybody, it's, it's news to everybody but us, I guess. Yeah. You know? What did you do? I was bad. You, were you really was, bad or did I they just bad. think you were bad? Well, um, I was bad as far as they were concerned. I don't think I did really much more than, than say what I did on The Tonight Show about the mad programmer, but in those days, you know, <laughs> it, these, days, these days you say something and you get rewarded for it because uh, people feel affirmed when mm. you say things that they think. And in those days, when you said things that um, the administration or the McCarthy uh, era, you know, didn't agree with, you were punished for it pretty severely. I know? think we had to go through that era to get to be where we are now in terms of the public recognition of uh, appreciating people who stand up and say what they think, don't you? No, I don't. I, no? Don't, I don't think so, because we went right into Watergate. You know, and I think that was a period of uh, tremendous um, con conformation. And no, I think I think Nixon had to go before we really uh, were able to say all the things we wanted to. And now, wh how would you describe the period we're in now with regard to this thing we're talking about—the freedom of speech, self-expression? Would you say it's just it's wide open? Is it too wide open? Are people blowing blowing up too much steam? No, I don't think I don't think there can. I think the whole basis of any system okay. of government is uh, to try something by the administration and for the citizens to be very, very cautious and cynical and say, "This is where you're going right, and this is where you're going wrong." Uh, well, I I think you you have to always be a watchdog. There's a Senate Bill Number One, you know, that's sitting in committee right now which uh, was started during the Nixon period and uh, which John Mitchell wrote the clauses in. Mm -hmm. Now that's still sitting there. That's something that everybody has to kind of watch out for and see where it goes because it imposes secrecy in government again. You know? One other thing I want to ask you about before we take a break. How, what's your response to the, the Gilmore decision? You just impressed me as being a woman who is into things, into, into the news, has an opinion about almost everything. How do you feel about what's been going I on with I feel very Gilmore? emotionally about it, really. And, 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 I, and I'm really glad you asked me because I've just been feeling emotionally in my bedroom 
about, about it and walking whole, around and being very angry. First of all, I think that in, in taking control of his own life, in taking control of his own death, which is taking control of his own life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what yes. I'm saying? I think it's probably the first time in his life that he has taken control and said, you said you were going to kill me, now you do it. Mm -hmm. That's control. He has control over his destiny at this point. Since he can't get life, he is insisting on control over death. But what he's doing is, is forcing these people to become accomplices in another murder. Now, in this case, it's his own. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there's no question about the fact that they are accomplices in a murder. Well, are you a person who, who would say that under absolutely no circumstances should there be the death penalty for anybody, no matter you know, how heinous the crime? You know, the, the thing is, what this is coming out of, you know, why are people in hospitals insisting on saying, at a certain point, I want control over my life, mm -hmm. kill me? What we have to say is, what is going on in nursing homes and in prisons that makes life so unbearable for people that they're saying, I want death with dignity, which is, in a funny sense, what he's saying, rather than to live under your conditions. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's not a question of would you under any conditions death penalty. I'd say you have to take a look and see what conditions these people are living under and say what's, what's pushing them into, into this kind of demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting reaction. It really is. I guess everybody has an opinion on this. For me, it's, it's such a grisly case. I see this as being a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a death wish. The guy wanted it to happen to him for whatever deep-seated psychological reasons. He wanted to set up a set chain of events that put him in the position of asking to be executed. That's the death wish theory. That's the way I see it. It's, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible, but in, in, in complying with it, I mean, you can have a death wish. You come to me, you say, kill me, I have a death wish. I don't go into your psychosis and carry it out. Mm -hmm. These these people. You don't think they should be carrying it out, setting up obviously. a firing squad. I mean, this, yeah. what are they doing? Frying people, shooting people. I mean, it's it, the whole system is so barbaric that... that uh, well, there are those who would say that what the things that are happening in society are so barbaric that the... Uh, the capital punishment is, uh, doesn't even compare to the kind of things that people are doing on the I streets. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. I think they are barbaric. I think it's like Bruegel. I mean, you go, you see, or Three Penny Opera. You go yeah. along and, and uh, everybody's doing it to somebody, and it's got to be stopped. It can't be stopped, though, by doing something as bizarre as what's going on.